I've had quite a few questions about the Steadicam I use for the Pocket 6K rig. So today I'm going to be showing you guys the Steadicam, the Steadicam vest, how the whole system works, the advantages and disadvantages to it, as well as the problems I've had with it, and how I've overcome those problems. So that's a lot to cover. Let's get started. What's up guys, my name is Eli. I'm a freelance videographer from Eastern North Carolina. I recently invested in a pocket cinema camera and one thing I really love to do is share information that I learn about this camera on this channel. So if you own a pocket 6K and want to learn from me, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button and introduce yourself down in the comments so I can learn from you and get tips from you as well. Now, I haven't owned the Pocket 6K for super long, so don't take this information for gold. Just know that it's coming from someone who wants to learn and wants to share information with others. Okay, so first things first, this is the Flycam Red King. I bought this probably about two years ago. I was just buying my first camera, some basic equipment. So the first thing that stood out to me about this thing was the price. And honestly, that's the same reason I didn't invest in a gimbal at the time because that was just kind of out of my price range. It was about $200 when I got it, and at the time, the other option in that price range was the Glidecam HD 2000. But what I really liked about this uh, is, is that it has these balancing knobs that make it super easy to balance your camera. I also liked how the gimbal on the Red King is adjustable up and down, so I don't always have to extend the bottom out when I need to adjust my drop time. But I would say the main thing that stood out to me about the Red King was the fact that it would grow with me if I ever got a bigger camera. If I get a bigger camera, it's still gonna support that because it was made for heavy cameras. Like the max weight on this thing is like a 15 pound camera. I gotta say though, at the time, I didn't think I'd be investing in a camera this big, especially this soon. I don't ever plan on having a camera that heavy, but here we are. Speaking of cameras with different weights though, I have a huge tip for anyone using the Red King with a camera that's actually a normal, sensible, all around weight and size. Basically, you have this knurled section under the gimbal of the Steadicam that gives you a lot of friction and grip when you're controlling the Steadicam, but that's actually not usually a good thing with a lighter weight camera. Having that knurled section usually gives you too much friction, so you'll end up overcorrecting and turning the camera more, controlling the camera more than you really should be. With a Steadicam, less is more, so you really wanna just be able to barely touch that thing and, and allow it to turn on its own. Also, since this knurled section is bigger, it gives you more torque. So I'm not gonna break out the physics book right now, but basically if you have a bigger diameter right here, it's easier to turn it just because it's bigger, not only because it's knurled, but because it's bigger, you'll be giving it more torque. And once again, you can over control the gimbal basically and turn it more than you really want to. So the solution to this is to take the entire head off of the Steadicam and take the gimbal off and flip it upside down and put it back on. This way, the knurled section is on top and you have a nice smooth shaft underneath to work with. You don't have too much friction and the shaft is smaller, so you're not giving it too much torque. I found it worked a lot better for me that way, so make sure to flip it over and try it that way and just see how you like it. So anyways, I continued to use this Steadicam with my SL2 and it worked great. And naturally, when I was building out my Pocket 6K, I wanted to make sure that it would work well with this Steadicam. So I knew the rig would easily balance on the gimbal, but that didn't mean it was gonna be easy. As I was putting parts to this camera in my Amazon cart, I was noticing it was gonna be big. <laughs> and when it showed up on my doorstep, it was big. <laughs> oh my word. This thing is way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So, since I'm a skinny dude, and I knew I was gonna have to be using this camera for a long amount of time, I, I knew my arm was probably just gonna die. <laughs> and to my engineering-oriented brain, the obvious solution was to just buy a metal arm. You have a metal arm? That is awesome, dude. Just putting on the steady canvas. 
So the way this thing works is fairly simple. Basically, uh, first off, you do have to modify your Red King before you can use it with the Red King vest. Oh, I lost it, dang it, it's gone. Oh, it's back there, oh, got it. The Steadicam vest comes with this little piece right here and you just put it into the handle of the Steadicam and it makes it the right diameter to fit on the arm's shaft. Now, the way the arm works is first of all, it comes with two of these arm holder things. <laughs> Not exactly sure what they're called. Basically, this just goes right onto the vest and then the arm, the bottom part of the arm, goes onto there, just like that. That goes on the vest. I would recommend using the shorter one. I like the shorter arm holder. I just, you'll just have to see what you like though. Another thing to keep in mind is that it comes with two different springs. I put the, the less stiff spring in it because my camera's not crazy heavy. Uh, if you're using a really heavy camera, you'll probably want to keep the more stiff spring in there. And switching that out was kind of annoying. You kind of have to use like two screwdrivers and take the whole thing apart, but it was worth it. You, you, you don't want it to be too stiff because then a lot of your movement from walking will you know, transfer right up into the camera. I've also got some Velcro right here on the vest so that when I'm not using the arm, it's not swinging all over the place. It just goes right there. And now I can do, I can use my arms and then when I'm ready to roll, I take that off and I put the steady cam on there. And then I can put the camera onto the steady cam and start balancing it. And this just takes practice, but uh, it's, it's not too hard to do once you get used to it. So that is how this system works. And I wish I could show you the whole thing better. Now you may be surprised to hear this after me just talking all about this, uh, but I actually really, really don't like the Steadicam vest. And here's why. The Red King by itself is very versatile. I can hold it to my side when I'm not using it. I can rest it over my shoulder. I can, I, sometimes I even use it as kind of a monopod. I'll rest the bottom on the ground and then I'll just use my hands on the camera and film that way. And you guys know, I love me some good versatility, okay? Everything I own is versatile. My car is versatile, it's four wheel drive so I can drive it different places. My desk, that's versatile because I sleep under it. Like my camera is no exception. Uh, but as soon as you put the, the Red King onto the fly cam vest, it kind of loses its versatility. It's attached to you and all the weight goes to your lower back, whether you're actually taking a shot. No, no. Taking, doing footage, whether you're currently filming or not, all that weight is always gonna be on your back when it's on the vest like this. So I find it very cumbersome and I find that the Steadicam, the idea of the Steadicam kind of loses its versatility when you put it on the Steadicam vest. It's just my thoughts, honestly, um, just my experience, but this is, this is kind of the conclusion I've come to about the Steadicam vest. And also, the other reason I don't like the vest is because I, I feel like I can get smoother shots with just the Steadicam without the vest. And this is really just because where the arm is attached is right above your hips. So when you're walking, a lot of that motion is being brought up into the Steadicam and you have to make that spring a lot looser so that your arm's doing some of the work in order to make it really work. And in that case, you're kind of defeating the purpose of having an extra arm helping you out. Now, if you guys have any recommendations on how to solve these problems, uh, I'm not trying to completely shoot down the Steadicam vest, just I'm open to suggestions, but as of right now, it doesn't seem to fit my workflow the way I thought it would. So I'm gonna take this thing off. Man, that feels good. Last weekend, I shot a wedding and I decided just to go a little bit more lightweight and I decided to try to ditch the vest. So I took off my follow focus handle and follow focus motor. As you can see, it just kind of breaks down the Pocket 6K a little more and that honestly worked fine. Didn't miss it a whole lot, just holding it when you're handheld and just doing it manually isn't that hard. And I ditched the Steadicam vest. Now, did my arm almost die? Yes. <laughs> it 
was it worth it for the extra versatility and functionality and the smoother shots that I could get without it? Also, yes. <laughs> the shots were smoother and when I wasn't filming, I could just set this thing down by my side. It's actually tall enough to where it's right at my hip. I can just leave a hand on it and it just it's just sitting here on the ground and I don't have to carry it when I'm not using it. Also, having to suit up before the ceremony and then unsuit up after the ceremony is just a hassle. Put that on backwards. And it's hard to fit that into my workflow. What if I'm busy, you know? I might not have time to do that. And then afterward, they're usually taking family portraits right after, and then I have to go take my vest off. So it's just one of those extra things that I, I don't wanna have to deal with. I just wanna keep things a little simpler. I know that's not simple, but you get the point. And when I went handheld, I would just take the camera off and I could just set this somewhere, okay? It's not a fragile piece of equipment. If somebody knocks this over, it's okay. As long as it's within my, my sight, I'm okay with just leaving it on the ground somewhere. And then I can go handheld, hold my camera, rest my hand like this, pull focus, and I'm good to go. So using the Steadicam in that way just works a lot better for me and a lot better for my workflow. Now I do shoot weddings. I know the Steadicam vest would probably be a lot more appropriate in some other fields of videography. Uh, but once again, for my workflow, it just didn't really work the way I hoped it would. It does take the weight off my arm, but it put, puts weight other places and it just it's just less convenient. So that's kind of what I've come to. But even though it didn't work for me the way that I hoped it would, I wanted to share this experience so that others can kind of see how a vest works because this isn't something I see information on a whole lot. Um, I do recommend the Flycam Red King. Love that thing. It's worked great for me for years, uh, but I can't recommend the vest. Everybody in their career has this process of figuring out what works for them. That's something I didn't know at first. I thought if something worked for somebody else who was like an expert in this field, that it would work for me. But it took me time to learn that just because something works for somebody else doesn't mean it's gonna work for me. I definitely don't regret buying the Flycam vest because it was just a step in that process for me of figuring out what works for me. And now I know that doesn't work and I've learned more about my gear and about my limitations and my arm didn't fall off, so that's great too. <laughs> it was sore for like four days. Anyways guys, that's it for today. That's all I've got for you. I really appreciate you watching to the end. But once again, if you do own a Pocket 6K or if your career is kind of in the same place as mine is, be sure to introduce yourself down in the comments and feel free to hit that subscribe button um, so we can all share tips with each other and learn from each other. Also, thank you guys for helping me reach 300 subscribers. Really appreciate it considering that I was at 100 subscribers only like a couple months ago. That's pretty impressive. So thank you guys for that. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next video.